Uh, you want to call the police on him for having a barbecue on a Sunday? I feel French! Back off! I'm going to tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. As per the 1964 Civil Rights Act, I cannot be discriminated against. Um, I do have a right to be able to breathe O2, not CO2, and I am being discriminated against right now at a store. Um, it's called Bones and Scones, and I'm being discriminated against because I'm being told I need to wear a mask, even though I have a religious exemption right and a God-given right to be able to breathe O2. Not I thought it was CO2. a medical exemption. Uh-huh, yes, medical exemption too. It's all it's all under the same topic. They close in six minutes from now as well, and I'm just here to buy a couple of items. So I don't know if this is going to turn into a whole long thing when I'm just here for a couple of items. If you need them so badly, why not just put on a mask? It's so because easy. I won't wear a mask. Okay, that's your decision. Okay, okay yes. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm trying not to argue. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm going to put no, I'll follow you. Okay? Yes. Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. There's also not one person in the store. They're about to close. You know, stores are actually uh, accommodating people. And they have a sign posted yes. that saying that they're... Right here. So yeah. right now, it it is, not, it it is is mean, I mean, we're a private business with private rights. Oh, there's more. Here it is. Right, but it's also not a law. So I could actually, you actually, so you're one of the first people that I've called 911 who actually doesn't seem to understand that in the end, I'm actually the one with the rights. Even though it's mandated, it's not actually a law. It's based off of an emergency, state of emergency that we are no longer in. So, but it's currently a municipal code that is in effect. That's okay. I mean, you can you can say all you want. I do know in the end I have the right, and in the end, okay. if I wanted to sue this gentleman, I could and I will win. Okay, I'm going to send an officer out to you. Can you just wait outside the for me? I will wait in my truck. Here's the thing. What's going to happen is the gentleman is going to close his door because they close in four minutes. I drove all the way out here to purchase a couple of items. So what exactly should I do? Because I'd like to just walk on in, grab the well, items. Point, he's not allowing you in. He is the owner of the store. They have the right to refuse service to anybody. He's not the illegal. owner. Okay. Well, they still have the right to refuse service, and he's an employee there. Okay. So then you could just let the officer know that I'm leaving. And so that you don't want us to come out then? I don't want you to come out because all I really want is for you to support me, for me to be able to purchase a few items. Oh, you're going, are you going live too? Huh? I'm just recording. You're recording me? That's fine. You are no. welcome to do your research to find it in the end. No, I'm, right. I don't right. care. Can you step outside? Yeah, uh-huh. And um, could you make sure that this gentleman gives me his name as well, ma'am? Just through the phone. Can you at least help me to get his name? Because if I wanted to, I could take it further, and I won't. Okay, fine. I'm not here to do that. Okay, have a but lovely day. And I was discriminated against okay. for not being able to stop shop at your store. That's your narrative. No, Karen, in the end, you earned a spot on Indisputable. That's what happened at the end, okay? So let me highlight a few things. Number one, it's amazing to me how individuals who are likely anti-progress for black, brown, margin, marginalized communities historically, etc. They will talk about the 1964 Civil Rights Act without knowing exactly what it means. If that ever happens to you and somebody tries to cite that you're violating their civil rights and they start talking about the 1964 Civil Rights Act, ask them to quote one line from the act. <laughs> Just one, one to do, all right? Number two, uh, she said she had a religious exemption, but obviously earlier she said it was a medical exemption. Uh, it is a BS exemption is what it really is. And number three, if you notice, this Karen said, you're one of the first people I called who doesn't know the law. That means that literally this person makes an effort to call 911 because she can't get something from a store because she refuses to wear a mask. This 911 operator is not the first person she has called about some dumb ish, okay? I'm sure they have more pressing matters to deal with, Karen.
Uh, Attorney Dahl, what are your thoughts on this? <laughs> You're right on on all of it. And again, the law, if she has a disability, they have to make a reasonable accommodation like curbside service. She doesn't have a right to enter. But her talking like, hey, I just wanna go in, I just wanna do this. I thought with her line of reasoning, she could have said, hey, I wanna go in and take some products off the shelf and I don't wanna have to pay for it because I'm being discriminated against not having enough money to buy <laughs> right, the products. Right. Like that I don't know to hear a Karen no, say that. That's that's awesome. But really, that becomes the the slippery slope. That becomes the linear logic. If exactly. you allow individuals who are not following the protocol of the business, if you allow them to still patronize the business, then what's to stop them from saying, "Well, I don't want to follow the protocol of paying money." Exactly. I don't want to follow this protocol. 